Today, I'm gonna share with you five big mistakes freight brokers making when choosing their freight broker niche, all right? So these are mistakes that I see very common mistakes, but can be very costly mistakes, all right? For those of you that know me, for those of you that may not know me, there's a saying, I didn't coin the phrase, but riches are in niches. And I'm a big believer in niching down as a freight broker. I think it's very hard to start and grow a successful freight brokerage by trying to be everything to everybody, okay? So number one, not pursuing their interests and or things they have past experience with. All right, so let me give you an example. If you previously worked in the produce industry and you have intelligence and insight and experience and connections in the produce industry, that could be a great niche to start to pursue. That could be a great niche to start with or other niches that maybe you have some sort of interest in, maybe international trade, import exports, the auto industry. You know, if you have an interest and or past experience, that's a great place to start. And I see people not doing that. They're not gathering all that they have inside of them as far as interest and experience and leveraging it as a way to choose their niche. So that's a huge mistake. That's number one, okay? Number two, not niching down enough. The fact is you can't serve everyone. You can't say, this is not a good niche, the van niche, all right? Say, I'm gonna do van freight. That's not a good niche. And I mean, it's not a good niche, not because you can't make money moving van freight or there's not a demand for van freight. There is, but the problem is, is it's too broad. You're trying to serve too big of an audience. And when you try to serve everybody, you end up serving nobody, okay? There's a saying that I heard a long time ago, to avoid drowning in the ocean with a broad niche, it's better to learn how to swim in a pond first, all right? So beyond that, it's easier to position yourself as an expert. It's easier to get your prospects attention when you niche down. And in addition, there's less competition, right? So there's less competition when you niche down because you're able to differentiate yourself. So rather than saying van freight, you might say, okay, I'm like iPhone. I first started, I'm going to focus on Northeast outbound van freight. So it's got to originate in New York or PA or up into New England. And it's got to go on a van and it's got to go West or South. That was my first niche. So that's an example of taking a very broad niche of van freight and niching it down into something that is much more manageable and much more realistic and much more targeted, okay? Number three, believe it or not, and I see this from time to time, is niching down too much, all right? So niching down too much prevents you from having a big enough market, what they call a TAM or a total addressable market. You've got to have a big enough market to grow and sustain a business. Rather than focusing on, like here's an example, bottled water out of New York, which is very limited, okay? There's only a certain amount of bottlers of water in New York, right? So that's very, very, very niche. So rather than focus on bottled water providers out of New York, you may change that and broaden your niche a little bit to say bottled beverages as a whole, right? You may focus on just the Northeast, right? or Northeast outbound, like I did when I originally started my business, right? So that's an example of taking a very small niche, a too small of a niche, which is the New York bottled water providers, right? And then converting that into bottled beverages, which opens it up into all kinds of beverages, and then opening up that geography a little bit, all right? Number four, not researching your niche before pursuing it. Some people just get this harebrained scheme that this is the niche I'm going to go after, right? I'm going to go after flatbed freight out of the Midwest. Okay, great. That sounds like a great niche. But you have to research your niche. You have to do some due diligence. You have to educate yourself. So some of the things that you're going to want to know. So who are the top 50 shippers in that niche? Who are the top five or 10 competitors in that niche? What is the load to truck ratio in that region when it comes to the equipment that they're going to be using? right? So those are some examples of things that you would want to know before going into a niche. I mean, there's a lot of other things that you'd want to know. 
you'd also want to know, is it a growing niche? Is it a shrinking niche? Are there more jobs in that niche this year than last year or less jobs? What is the size of that niche in billions of dollars? Typically, each niche is going to be billion dollar niches, right? So, so yeah, so you're going to want to do some researching and be educated, right? You need to educate yourself about that niche before you pursue it, right? And then number five, number five is this, giving up too quick because you get distracted. Everybody's heard it before, shiny object syndrome. So you start to pursue a niche and then you start getting a little resistance and you're not having all the success you thought you would have and it's not going as quick as you would like and money's not falling out of the trees and you decide because somebody, you heard something on YouTube, you read something online, you watched something on TV and you decided to pivot into a totally different niche without any you know, rhyme or reason. Okay. So that's number five, which is, you know, pivoting too quick, not giving too, enough time to develop that niche and falling victim to shiny object syndrome, right? It's very easy to do. There are tons of niches out there. There are tons of opportunities out there. So those are my five big mistakes to avoid when choosing your freight broker niche. These are very important. Pay close attention to these because that saying riches are in niches but not every niche is a good niche. And understanding these five mistakes that you could make will definitely help you hone in on the right niche. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, if you're curious about becoming a freight broker and you're not quite sure where to start, maybe you've been getting a lot of information on YouTube and Google and all over the place, but it just doesn't all come together. It's not jiving together. Check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com trained over 10,000 students, been in business, had that program for well over a decade now. And we've, we offer a 60 day, 100% unconditional money back guarantee. If you're not happy, just ask us, send us an email and we will gladly refund your money. So hope you guys enjoyed that. Make sure again, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you guys thought of this training. Rank it from one to 10. I'd love to hear from you. If it was one and it sucked, hit me up with a one. Let me know how I can improve it. If it was a 10, let me know. I truly appreciate it. I want to make sure I'm serving you and hitting the mark. Uh, appreciate you being here. Have an awesome day. Like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you soon.